Hello, I am Mark Burrow, Professor of Economics at Telecom Paris and a Joint Academic Director of SER. Today I want to talk about the rise of digital conglomerates and the competition concerns it may raise. Over the last years, we have witnessed the emergence of large digital conglomerates, such as the so-called GAFAMs. These big tech firms have achieved high degrees of diversification in different ways. They diversify when they expand directly into new markets by introducing new products and services, but diversification may also occur through the financing of startups. And last but not least, diversification can be achieved via mergers and acquisitions. Today, the competition in the digital sector is heavily shaped by this competition between large digital conglomerates. Big tech players all keep strongholds where they have been historically dominant. For example, it's search for Alphabet Google, it's social networks for Facebook, but they also compete with one another on multiple markets and with smaller rivals focusing on more specific markets. In this talk, I want to discuss first the motivations of these firms to expand as digital conglomerates and then the potential competitive effects of digital conglomerates. To understand the incentives of digital firms to expand as conglomerates, I think it's useful to analyze motivations behind conglomerates mergers, which is one important channel of diversification for big tech players. A conglomerate merger can be defined as a merger between neighboring markets with non-substitutable products that are offered to the same group of consumers. Before the wave of conglomerate mergers that we are witnessing today in the digital sector, a major wave of conglomerate mergers took place in the 1960s and the 1970s. I will first present the main economic theories that have been proposed to explain this wave of conglomerate mergers. These theories prove useful to understand the current rise of digital conglomerates. Then I will discuss new theories that are also useful to explain the emergence of digital conglomerates. So, which lessons from the past are relevant today to understand diversification in the digital economy? There are three classical views of conglomerate mergers that are useful today to analyze digital conglomerates. The market power theory states that firms expand into neighboring markets because it allows them to increase their market power indirectly. This motivation may be at play for digital conglomerates. In particular, I will argue later that digital firms have incentives to create large product ecosystems which increase differentiation between them and soften competition. The resource theory argues that firms diversify in response to excess capacity in some specific resources. These resources include production factors, some specific goods or services that the firm has produced, could also be the knowledge that the firm has accumulated over time. In the digital sector, may, it may be that firms have resources of various kinds in excess capacity, providing them with incentive to expand. It could be skills or talent, it could be also consumer data that can be used in a variety of products and are always in excess capacity due to their non-rival nature. Finally, the internal market theory argues that firms diversify as a response to the imperfection of external capital markets. In other words, a, firm's, a firm forms a conglomerate to create an internal capital market that is more efficient than external capital markets. Digital conglomerates have internal capital markets that may allow new ventures to obtain funding more easily than from external capital markets. Besides, we observe that many digital firms invest in new startups through venture funding, which is consistent also with this internal capital market theory. Two key characteristics of the digital economy may also explain the emergence of conglomerates in the digital sector. First, on the supply side, firms enjoy strong economies of scale and scope in product development. Economies of scale in production represent an important feature of the digital economy. This is well known and well documented. But what we argue is that there are also strong economies of scale and scope at the stage of product development. This is because digital products, which are based on hardware and software, involved, involve a modular design which implies strong economies of scope in product development. 
Some modules used for one product, for example an algorithm or consumer data, can be reused and shared with other products, which reduces product development cost. Economies of scope in product development reduce the cost of expanding into a multi-product entity and to create product ecosystems. Second, on the demand side now, the joint consumption of digital products from the same product ecosystem may generate consumption synergies for the consumers. Some of these synergies enjoyed by the consumers are due to shared functionalities between products in the same ecosystem. The linkage between different products in an ecosystem can itself be a strategic decision for firms. The presence of demand-side synergies gives firms another incentive to expand their product lines and to create product ecosystems. In turn, this gives them an incentive to expand into neighboring markets. In the EU, conglomerates mergers are analyzed today with a positive prior. The only concerns relate to the pot potential anti-competitive effects of bundling and tying. What about digital conglomerates? The first possible source of concern is bundling, again. Bundling can be motivated by efficiency gains, of course, but firms may ha also have more strategic reasons to bundle. First, bundling by incumbent firms may reduce the ability of innovating potential competitors to enter a market. Second, firms may create product ecosystems to increase differentiation and soften competition with their rivals. Furthermore, Economies of scope in product development reduce the cost of a product proliferation strategy. The control over essential components, product components or key inputs may also confer competitive advantage over potential rivals for the creation of product ecosystems. Take data as an example. If product innovation is data-driven, as we hear today, data may constitute, may constitute an essential component for product innovation. Finally, preemptive acquisitions are another source of concern. The acquisition of promising startups by large digital firms can be driven by efficiency motives, of course. However, there is also the risk that these acquisitions are driven by preemptive motives, possibly leading to killer acquisition. In my joint paper with Alexander Strel, which you can find online on SSRN, we uh, start from this analysis of digital conglomerates, which leads us to recommend improvements to EU competition policy when applied to the digital economy.